الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهن الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Masail Nisa Today we will be big Today we will be beginning on the massive topic of marriage. Now, the topic of marriage, as we all know, is a very important but huge topic for us to cover. So, inshallah, we'll be doing it in um, sections over the weeks to come. So, today I'd like to begin with discussing what we look for when we go out seeking a spouse. How do we know that we're ready for marriage? And how do we know where to begin looking? And also we'll discuss about the problems our brothers and sisters face whilst searching for a spouse, whether it's here, um, whether you know it's somebody from back home, and the steps that we can take to help each other um, get through these difficult um, stages. To begin with, so even before we look at the topic of marriage, something we need to first put in perspective is the uh, Muslim point of view. So the reason we look for a certain spouse and we look for certain qualities in a spouse is because we're Muslim. As a Muslim, we have a duty to look for a spouse to help fulfill our duties um, as a Muslim. So, for example, we know that our purpose in life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something not all of us understand. So really, depending on the education you've had, the upbringing you've had, some of us feel much closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and much better equipped for our worship, and others feel a bit distant. So this is an important question to ask. Our purpose in life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know from the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that um, I have created jinn and man, but to worship me. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So we know and we understand that our purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our life revolves around Qur'an and Sunnah and what is right and what is wrong. What governs our life is halal and haram. And Understanding halal and haram um, not only shapes who we are, but also helps us when we're looking for that spouse or looking for a life partner companionship because your um, morals and your ideas and your understanding of Islam needs to match. Otherwise, there will be incompatibility. So today, inshallah, I will begin with looking at what we are... Uh, um, our self-development, what we can offer in ourselves before searching for that in a spouse. Of course, we can't expect to find certain qualities in a spouse unless we offer those qualities ourselves. Because we often find that when we're having discussions with brothers and sisters, we have a long list of what we're looking for, um, our expectations, what we want in a spouse. And often the case is that we haven't looked at ourselves. What do we have to offer? What qualities do I as a person have to offer the other person? And this is something that will not just help develop yourself, but when it comes to looking for a spouse, inshallah, you will find that this, these points will actually help you. So self-development is something that, um, alhamdulillah, our parents um, start working on, you know, from, from um, childhood. Our parents give us an upbringing and edu provide an education for us, an Islamic education, as well as an academic education. This education is what will shape who we are, the character that we formulate, and this will then in turn determine the kind of spouse we're looking for. So just to touch on a few of the challenges that this causes us, because we are being brought up or bringing up our children here in the UK, and, you know, with the Western education system, we have the Islamic education system in place. You know, we have many madrasas, we have maktabs um, throughout the weekend and throughout the evenings. So this shapes who um, we grow up to become as a Muslim or a Muslimah. And you'll find that certain influences will creep up into our life. So, for example, feminism is something that our sisters get influenced by. Because what we find when we look at the West, we have a lot of role models of independent, professional, wim achieving women who, you know, successful women. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um, in terms of... Uh, um, 
having an ideal to be successful, to have a profession in life is not haram for us. For us as Muslims, what's important is that we balance our lives, that we know what our priorities are. So you can see how these things can creep into our lives. Another issue we have is, so naturally the Western system, we find that there is um, this um, culture of exploring relationships outside of marriage. Again, you find that this idea of exploring relationships outside of marriage contradicts Islam. So for me or for us as Muslims, we explore relationships or we will um, take the benefits of a relationship um, within the boundaries of marriage. And that's why marriage is very important for us. Um, so it was important to touch on some of these topics just to show you the kind of challenges we face here uh, as a Muslim or Muslimah. And also just to remind you that um, everything a Muslim does is from the point of view of halal and haram. So even when we go seeking a spouse, we, well, we are looking at what is halal and what is haram, the methods by which to go looking for a spouse, and also the qualities which we want to find in a spouse. And another uh, important factor that almost gets left out most of the times is when the families come together to meet and discuss how to go about settling, for example, the mahar, the whole arrangement between the husband and the wife, um, things can get complicated because sometimes what we find is culture comes in. The, um, we find that the prospective um, wife and husband, you know, their ideas may meet, their morals, um, you know, their values, they're, they're at one with them. But often we find the families are clashing. So we have these challenges as well. But coming to the main challenge nowadays, what you will find is when you speak to youngsters, whether you speak to our brothers or our sisters, I was once myself approached by a young sister who said, um, you know, who I was shocked to find out. She approached me and said, you know, uh, Ustada, I, I'm really afraid um, to even think about marriage. She said, because we look around us at the society and we find that marriages are failing. Marriages, we find, you know, we've just past the season of marriage, for example. The summer holidays have come to an end. Our children have gone back to schools, colleges, universities, and we visited many cousins and relatives, you know, and um, attended many weddings. And Alhamdulillah, what a blessing it is to see a couple come together, to see two people come together in a beautiful relationship that is protected and blessed and supported by the families. But Alhamdulillah, for all the people who have found spouses this summer, there have been others who have faced challenges of finding somebody suitable. And it's not always a matter of, um, because they, it's not a matter of not having qualities themselves, but finding a compatible spouse has become difficult because we've strayed away from Islam. We're no longer using Islam as our yardstick. So we find we're, affected by um, grades, for example, we're more interested in what degrees they have, um, you know, whether they've done further studies, whether they have a master's, whether they have a PhD. So we have this fascination with education. And as I said, it doesn't mean to say that, you know, we should shun education. Education is encouraged in Islam. But when it comes to looking for a husband or wife, we want to go back to the Quran and Sunnah. What does the Quran and Sunnah say about what we need to look at in a husband or a wife? So simply put, I think we understand that the family unit in Islam consists of the husband and the wife. This is a companionship. It is a partnership which eventually will bring a family, um, you know, which will bring up a family, which will raise young children um, into, um, you know, role models of Muslims and Muslimas. So it's a huge responsibility. And that's why the compatibility is very important. Um, amongst the many other issues we face, because, for example, as we said, marriage is no longer last because we've not really determined what it is we're looking for in a marriage and the reasons, um, you know, we're looking for certain values in a marriage, we find that the purpose is not being fulfilled. Also, the other thing is we have we find um, there's a lot of deceit present. And again, I think it boils down to what's your reference point? Because you will find when two people are true believers and when their reference is the Quran and Sunnah, then, you know, inshallah, 
things will go according to plan and according to their good intentions and you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them um, however it, it is a difficult um, issue especially in this country we tend to find um, prospective spouses either through our relatives or friends and if that avenue is exhausted then you know we can go looking outside of the cities we can go looking outside of the country but that has its own challenges because if you do look uh, for relationships um, abroad for example that creates another challenge of legality and you know making applications for uh, making your spouse legal in this country and that can be quite lengthy as we know so you know subhanallah I think um, as Muslims we face a lot of challenges but at the same time marriage is such a blessing it's such a beautiful blessing that we take the steps to make an effort for um, searching a spouse you know searching for a spouse either for ourselves for our children for our grandchildren for our relatives our friends and family so I'm going to move on and um, discuss a hadith with you. Again, um, this hadith will show you how important it is for us, not just as a person, as an individual, but also when you take on the role of a husband or a wife. And I think this will set the scene for us as to what marriage actually is and what it expects from both our brothers and sisters. So. Um, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. So what did he mean? Every one of you is a shepherd. So that's to say the husband is a shepherd, the wife is a shepherd. And anybody who is in a position of leadership, as we know, we often um, refer to this hadith from the point of view of leadership. So we know... Um, within the home, the husband is the head of the household, so he has a leadership position. Then after the husband, we have the wife. She has a leadership position because she will be responsible for the home. So this structure is already present um, in our deen. We know that the husband is responsible for the family and for providing for the family, providing an education, providing a roof over their head and responsible for their well-being. And we know that the role of the wife is that of supporting the husband, of bringing up the children, of providing a uh, peaceful home environment for the family. So that at the end of the day, you know, when the husband goes out to work, he returns home, he has a safe haven to return to. And this is where he gets his peace and, you know, he can rejuvenate, re, um, re um charge himself and get back to work and get back to life and so this is the structure of the family unit in Islam um, but also just to um, finish up the hadith and we uh, just to show you uh, the details and how it span pans out to every other person as well so the uh, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock so the leader of people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. So this could be the rule of the countries, you know, the prime minister, um, you know, as we know, we've just taken on a new prime minister. So the prime minister has a responsibility towards uh, the citizens of this country. Again, um, the hadith goes on to say, a man is the guardian of his family and he is responsible for them. A woman is the guardian of her husband's home and his children, and she is responsible for them. The servant of a man is a guardian of the property of his master, and he is responsible for it. Surely every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. And this hadith is related in both Sahih uh, al-Bukhari and Muslim, um, you know, and is authentic, an authentic saying of our uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So again, you can see that um, this is the positioning of a husband or a wife, um, you know, in, in, in the structure of a marriage. Now, what I'd like to uh, look into next is, so if we're looking for a spouse, as I said before, I want every person, I want our brothers and sisters to focus on themselves. Before we go searching for a spouse, we need to look at ourselves and, and first understand ourselves. So it's a bit like this, if I'm unsure of who I am and if I'm unsure of my qualities 
um, naturally I will not be able to identify what I'm looking for in another person and I will not be able to um, find somebody compatible so it's always good to begin with yourself so some of the points I'm going to take you through um, I have I think six to seven points but we'll briefly look at them and then we'll discuss other relevant steps of looking for a spies, spouse um, so to begin with we often look at many marriages and it's very easy to think when you see a successful and happy marriage that you know that must have happened ov overnight they found love overnight or they were just blessed to have found it let me tell you that's not always true yes alhamdulillah for some people um, you know finding a spouse and even getting married runs smoothly but that does not mean to say they d they don't face challenges in the life to come after marriage so for example you'll find that some people will face the challenges of not being able to have children after marriage so they will go seeking ways of finding um you know uh, or ways of finding um, how to ease the way for themselves to have children you know whether it's adoption or whether it's um, IVF treatment or some treatment um, you know of um, whatever treatment methods they choose it could be medical it could be ruqya etc you know so whatever medical um, whatever treatment we seek the challenges are still there others will have children but will find that you know a few years into the marriage incompatibility incompa comes in so you'll find that the couple eventually find out they're incompatible but I want to ask you a question is it really that we're incompatible or is it just that we've grown apart sometimes what often happens after marriage is that we become occupied in our jobs in our roles when we have children and we become busy with our children we actually stop working on ourselves and working with our spouses so we stop working on the marriage and um, on our partnership so this is going to be another topic that we'll look into inshallah um, and as you can see like any relationship the relationship of husband and wife requires constant work as we know uh, I should have mentioned this in the beginning but marriage is the coming together of two people um, and as human beings we are all imperfect so it's the coming together of two imperfect persons who are trying to make you know who are trying to work on a contract which is binding between the both of them we're trying to fulfill each other's rights with the best of the knowledge they have what they have learned from Islam uh, by necessity and you know inshallah with the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah and with the guidance of their elders um, advice from the elders and you know from the community um, from the learned uh, imams and le faith leaders but often we still face challenges because everybody's ideas are different and sometimes we grow apart so this is another um, topic that we'll be exploring as you can see um, as we go through today's discussion I'm going to be touching on many topics that are possible um, to cover around this and that's why uh, it won't be possible to cover all of these issues today but inshallah in the weeks to come we will uh, divide up these topics and explore them further and um, I will of course welcome uh, your views and your input so that our viewers can benefit from that so um, just another reminder so it's not an overnight struggle marriage re marriage requires hard work from both and sometimes one spouse will um, will fail on you know providing um, for the other spouse or fulfilling the other spouse's rights and this is where one of us has to step in and take control so there'll be times for example in any relationship when one person has let go the other person works harder so it's not always going to be a 50 50 relationship sometimes you'll find it will be a 40 60 sometimes even 30 70 you know if it goes to 20 80 you know that the other person has overdrawn um, you know it's going to definitely create um, problems in your relationships and this is when it requires the two people to sit together and put their heads together um, but that's not our topic today so I'm going to move on but the reason for um, bringing up these points is that I want to share another hadith with you which is mentioned in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi um, Anas ibn Malik reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, all of the children of Ad Adam are sinners and the best sinners are those who repent so he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
كل ابن آدم خطاؤون وخير الخطائين التوابون So the best of the sinners are those who repent. So this is just a reminder that when we are looking for a spouse, it's not that we're going to be become perfect spouses. You know, I'm not going to be the perfect wife and I'm not going to find myself a perfect husband. I think we need to accept that we're imperfect beings, but we're trying our best. You know, and as the Prophet Sallallahu said, we are all sinners and the best of sinners are those who repent. So we will often sin and we will often make mistakes with each other. But what does it boil down to? That we come back and that we repent. And if you're repentful and if you're actually aware of your own mistakes, you will be able to see that, you know, even your spouse can make mistakes and it's okay to forgive others. Because if we can forgive ourselves, then of course, forgiving your spouse and, you know, your family members or forgiving the other person in any relationship uh, really should come easy. So that was the reason I want to share that hadith. Um, but also I wanted to touch on another point. So one of my first points um, when um, looking for what you can offer is self-awareness. So number one, ask yourself, are you self-aware? Okay. So this is the question I'm going to leave, with, uh, leave you with. Um, Self-awareness, we're going to return from the break and go into this topic. Um, so uh, please don't leave. Um, we're just going for a short break and I will see you soon after, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. what we can look in um, what we can look for in a spouse but before that what we must find within ourselves what it is we we have to offer so before the break the point that we stopped on was number one self-awareness we want to look at self-awareness in ourselves so when looking for a spouse naturally you have to see what is it that i have to offer and the better you know yourself, then you'll be able to, um, you know, precisely look for somebody who will match, um, match you in your values, in your ways, um, you know, in how you wish to live, um, and also match you in your deen. So just to give you an example, something, um, an example that my uh, sister often likes to use um, when describing situations. Um, and this is something we often hear from our teachers and our friends. So my sister once said to me, um, we need to, you know, when you're, if you're in a plane and there's an emergency, um, before you go to help somebody else with the oxygen mask, what must you do? You must put it on yourself. So of course, can you see, if I begin to help somebody else who is in danger, but I'm also in danger myself, before I can even help them, you know, it's possible that I might pass out or that I won't be of any help to myself or the other person. So first of all, ensure your own safety. You know, ensure that you are well um, and in a position to be looking for a spouse. And then, of course, you'll have the ability to um, determine what you want in a spouse. But not only that, but you'll have a clear mind um, and a clear understanding when you see that person and when you see certain values or you know certain habits in this person you will be able to determine some um, what their characteristics and get to know them um, and you know see the positive in them um, so similarly this is why we work on ourselves so the the points that you can look for in yourself um, that uh, i've listed are number one you need to have a self-awareness you know um, you need to know your likes your dislikes um, where are you with your deen? Where is your understanding of Islam? You know, what is your understanding of worship? How do you um, treat your daily prayers? Are you able to pray five times a day? Um, you know, are you the kind of person who prays on time? Or are you the kind of person who feels, um, you know, who's struggling with their profession, with their work life or their study life and prayers? So what that means is that, you know, you often feel compelled to um, work or to study and, you know, you come and um, pray all of the day's prayers, for example. Um, you know, as I said, um, we have Muslims um, who try to fulfill 
um, their duties as a Muslim or Muslima to the best of their abilities. But these are things that will, you know, tell us apart or sort of give us an idea of the kind of challenges we're facing and be able to get to know each other. So look for self-awareness and what I mean is recognize your strengths, recognize your weaknesses, what are your passions? Um, you know, it's only when we recognize our own weaknesses and strengths and we can work on them and we recognize what our passion is, what we want in life, you know, whether there's a certain career we'd like, whether we want to um, pursue a career first or become a parent first. Um, so these are things you will need to discuss with your prospective spouse. Um, also, it will give you direction in your uh, journey or in your life. Um, the other example I can give you is sometimes, you know, can you ever imagine a person getting on a bus or boarding a train or a coach, um, you know, or an aeroplane and saying, I don't know where I'm going? We would think that's absolutely, um, you know, silly. Um, everybody knows what their destination is. So similarly for us as Muslims or Muslims, we know what our destination is. And we know when we're getting on a bus or a train or an aeroplane, exactly where we're going. So this is how we need to be focused on, um, you know, how focused we need to be, even when we're looking for a spouse. We need to focus on ourselves and, um, you know, develop a self-awareness of who we are. Uh, because only if we understand who, the kind of person we are ourselves, can we then know what we're looking for in a spouse, you know, somebody to complement um, us, our, you know, the characters uh, that I have in me. Um, and, you know, somebody to support me um, in my weaknesses and somebody who can share in my strengths. Um, so, inshallah, this will give you um, not only passion, you know, in what you want to achieve, but also, uh, you know, a sense of purpose and direction. Number two, um, a purpose-driven life. So, as I said earlier, as Muslims, we know what our purpose in life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our actions. And our actions are guided by halal and haram. So again, what's your understanding of halal and haram? How um, you know, strict are you about these things? It, is it something um, you feel you'd like to um, become um, more regimented with? You know, um, if, if it's something you're unaware of, then of course, if you're looking for a spouse who is um, you know, very educated in Islam and who knows um, they're halal and haram and who lives by uh, a lot of Islamic values but you haven't had a chance to adopt them yourselves or understand them yourselves then of course this will create incompatibility so an Islamic education seeking an Islamic education is vital of course as uh, um, young Muslims we all have some exposure to Islam you know we either have been to a maktab or um, you know in our secondary education we've been to a Muslim school or we've studied Islam in some capacity some of us go into uh, studying um, Islam you know full-time some of us part-time but the important thing is that you're learning about your deen um, it's important you know when you're looking for a spouse but also um, we know from Islam that this is a an obligation upon every Muslim to seek knowledge and this is something we know from uh, you know Islam by necessity um, so this is what you will be looking for that's number two purpose-driven life um, so that when you meet that prospective spouse you know you can um, check what it is they're looking for Number three, um, I've said, a constant source of self-motivation. What motivates you? What keeps you going? Um, you know, what is it that when you, um, you know, hit a wall, when you find something very challenging and you feel like giving up, what is it that keeps you going? So um, I don't mind sharing with you, for example, that for me, something, um, a motto, you know, that I've taken, um, I've, I've ad, 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 um, adopted in my life is that obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off the goal. Um, and this is something I learned in my adulthood. So when I um, began studying um, as a mature student, for example, there were very many obstacles and I had young children. Um, so of course, it felt very difficult and at times you feel like giving up. But what was the reason I carried on? And this was something... Um, um, you know, um, somebody um, told me, um, he said, 
that you know obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off the goals and ever since I've al always held on to that um, you, you know onto that belief I wanted to um, just get through my struggles anytime I face a difficulty I thought about that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me on this path and these are my uh, tests and trials that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for me to make me grow or to help me grow and to test my um, devotion uh, because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you think that you will say I believe and that you will not be tested um, and so you have to understand that these are tests um, so if you have this understanding, um, you know, you will get a sense of motivation because you will know that through it is through these difficulties and these experiences that you are drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and so that's why a constant, you need to have a constant source of self-motivation um, in yourself. And it's only then that you can realize or you can ask your spouse that this is what I'm looking for, somebody to constantly motivate me because this is what motivates me. Um, and, you know, this one of the questions you can present um, what motivates you um, number four um, having an intense focus and um, you know so what I mean by having an intense focus is so you know what your goals are and you know doing them with precision we know that for example in our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have a uh, perfect example Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said um, um, you know that in our Prophet Sallallahu there is a perfect example and in the, and for this reason you know we look to all his examples in the hadith um, you know in the seerah for example and we look as to how he conducted himself with his family his wives and we can um, emulate these behaviors and you know these are the kind of um, these, these are what we can, the references we can use as we develop our own characters. And I'm not saying that we're going to become perfect. And, uh, you know, a lot of people may use this argument that, well, he was a perfect character. You know, he was the Nabi of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, of course, we're not going to be of his rank. And, and that's fine. The thing is, we're not going to be perfect, but we can certainly work towards excellence. And we can do that by um, learning from the examples of our, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So just having intense focus on who you want to be. Um, and inshallah, this will help you attract, um, you know, the kind of person that you want in your life as your partner, as your companion. Now I'm going to move on to number five, which is um, try to build a greater emotional resilience in yourself. And when I say a uh, greater emotional resilience, what I mean is that we know that as Muslims, uh, we're going to face tests and trials in our lives. So you need to mentally and physically prepare yourself. You have a duty, your body um, you know, has a haq upon you. Um, as we know, um, you know, animals have a right upon us. Our families have a right upon us. So we have to fulfill all these rights and to be able to do them to the best of our ability, what does it require? It means that we must look after ourselves. So our health is important, you know, how much we sleep, what we eat, whether we exercise, whether we take care of our mental and physical well-being is important and will reflect. Okay. And, um, and my last point now I'm coming to and then we'll wrap up is, you know, so you're seeking a longer state of happiness and deep, fulfilling, meaningful relationship. So as you can see, these are the things that you should be looking for in yourself. And inshallah, next week we will continue from there. Um, and we will just explore what we can offer when we go looking for a spouse and how to begin going looking for a spouse. And our reference point will be Quran and Sunnah. Jazakumullah khair for joining me today. Um, and uh, please do join us again next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.